Hello and welcome to another video on Progressive Coder. Today we are going to talk about type ORM entities and how you can use them. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon. So what are entities in application design terms? You could think of entities as a sort of glue between the business logic of your application and the actual data storage. Due to their central nature, entities act as the foundation of any ORM. Entities in type ORM are no different. A typical entity in type ORM is a class. This class defines a collection of fields or columns along with the database operations. Every type ORM entity maps to an equivalent table in the database. In other words, how your database looks like largely depends on the entities defined using the type ORM specific conventions. Starting with the basics, how do you create a type ORM entity? Well, type ORM provides a bunch of decorators to do the job. The entity decorator or annotation is the first important decorator you would be using. This decorator is used to declare a typical class as an entity. For example, the flight class has been decorated with entity annotation. To denote columns within the table, we decorate the fields in the class with column decorator. We will get to other decorators in a minute. But the point is that once we declare an entity using the entity decorator, type ORM will create a corresponding table in the database. To make type ORM aware of this entity, we have to add it to the entity's array in the data source configuration. There are other options in the data source such as database type and credentials. Let us look at other decorators. In a type ORM entity, we must have at least one primary column. To declare a column as primary, we need to use the primary generated column decorator. For such columns, type ORM will automatically generate values. You can use them for ID fields. There are other variations to the primary column. For example, the primary column decorator simply declares a column as primary. However, a value is not generated automatically. We have to manually assign a unique value for such a column. We can also specify a UUID based primary column by using the primary generated column decorator with UUID in quotes. Type ORM will automatically assign a UUID value to such columns. We can also have composite primary columns. Basically, this is a combination of columns forming a primary column together. Moving on, we have normal type ORM columns. They are denoted using the column decorator we saw earlier. Additionally, this decorator can accept some configuration options. For example, if we want to designate a particular numeric field of type float, we can add the configuration option type to the column decorator. This way type ORM will know that this particular field will have a float value. Another important type of field is the enum. Enums are a pretty powerful tool. They allow us to define a set of possible values for a certain field. As an example, the enum flight type has two possible values, domestic and international. We use this enum type for one of the fields in the flight entity. The column decorator takes a configuration object with properties such as type, enum and default value. Type ORM also supports generated columns. This type of column is quite useful when we want to generate the value for a particular field based on some other fields. For example, we have something called source destination code, the value of which is derived using an expression. Basically, we are concatenating the values of source and destination and generating the value for source destination code. Type ORM does all the heavy lifting of processing such fields. Moving on, entity listeners is another important type ORM column type. Using entity listeners, we can generate values for certain columns based on database events. Database events could be insertion of a record, after insertion and so on. For example, we set the value of the flight code column using the before insert entity listener. This entity listener is actually tied to a function that computes the value of the flight code based on some special logic. Next, we have a bunch of timestamp related columns. For example, create date column assigns the create timestamp to the underlying column. Similarly, the update date column decorator assigns the last updated timestamp. Going further, how do we actually use the type ORM entity to insert a record into the database? We first create an instance of the entity. 
For example, we create an instance of flight using the, using the new keyword. Then we can set the values of the various fields of the entity. Since we are using data mapper or the repository pattern, we get access to an instance of the repository class for the flight entity. If you are interested, you can know more about data mapper pattern or active record pattern. The link to the video will be on the top right corner of the screen. Anyways, once we get an instance of the repository, we call the save method and pass it the instance. This method will save the new record to the database. Similarly, we can use the find method of the repository to fetch the records from the flight table. As simple as that. So that was all about type ORM entities and how we can define them and use them in our application code. If this video was useful, please do like and comment and also share the video. It will help the channel grow. See you in the next video.